Next, let's talk about a severe allergic reaction. So, we would have already given the medicines we just talked about, Benadryl, a steroid, and Pepsid or Zantac. If someone is starting to have difficulty breathing or swallowing, uh, the next thing that you'd want to use is an EpiPen. And uh, it's very important that you read the instructions on how to use an EpiPen. These are automatically deployed once you remove the cap. You take the pen and don't do it on the arm. I'm just showing you. You do this either in the bicep, buttock, or the thigh. But as soon as you touch it to the skin and put pressure, it'll automatically deploy a needle and dispense the epinephrine. So that's for a severe allergic reaction where there is um, airway compromise or breathing uh, concern. So four medicines in that case. We already talked about diabetes with the glucose tabs and asthma with the albuterol. Let's next talk about a patient that you might think is having chest pain related to heart issues. Now this could be um, a slightly older patient um, who might have high blood pressure, might have diabetes, might be a smoker, um, and they're out hiking on the trail and suddenly are complaining of substernal or pressure under their chest. The best thing in the field is just to assume that that's going to be heart related and obviously you need to get that person to medical care as soon as possible. But one thing that you could grab in your kit that's going to be helpful immediately are two tablets of bare aspirin, 325 milligrams. You have them take these two tablets of aspirin, chew them, don't swallow them, but chew them, and then a swish of water. That's probably the best thing that you can do for that person right away. And of course, then get them out to medical attention. Okay, I always like to be prepared for everything. And of course, this kit, like all kits, are a compromise between the ideal and what you're going to actually have when you need it. And if you're out backpacking, this is a kit that you would likely have, and you're going to have to find a compromise. This is my compromise for airway management. Um, this is a nasopharyngeal airway or an NPA and um, in this bag is the airway and a uh, tube of a lubricant and you basically just lubricate this um, uh, nasal uh, pharyngeal airway or a nasal trumpet and it gets inserted into the uh, patient's nose with the uh, trumpet or flare end sitting on the outside. The purpose of this is this tube elevates the tongue up off the um, back of the airway and helps uh, provide a minimally secure airway and they can breathe through this uh, um, tube. Of course this is just a stopgap measure. It's nice to have anybody in this condition of course is going to need to get out to medical attention ASAP. But this could be a good thing to have especially if you need to deploy your CPR kit. Let's go over the contents of this. Parts of this are from a uh, adventure medical kit. So there's a very nice illustrated guide on dealing with life-threatening emergencies including uh, ventilation and CPR. A nice reference uh, uh, piece of material to have in the field but hopefully you'll have some training ahead of time and this will supplement that if things get crazy. In here is a face shield for uh, assisting with rescue breathing uh, especially during uh, CPO. So, there are instructions on the back how to use this but it basically is a plastic shield you put over the patient's mouth and then there's a, a piece that you use to blow on and there's a filter that helps keep you separate from the patient and you're not going to get any uh, hopefully not get any contaminants. And of course another pair of gloves. I think having these gloves is important and I just keep them in that CPR kit. When you need it you can just grab that kit and you're good to go. Again, there's more aspirin there, so if you're grabbing that kit, um, they're right there, and then there's a antiseptic wipe. Okay, there's the basic kit, and again, remember that this kit um, augments your level one or level two kit. It certainly does not answer all questions, but will give you some additional capabilities. And remember, capabilities and expectations change depending upon the prevailing conditions and situation. So this kit is really geared to being as lightweight as possible, providing the most capability as possible 
for a backpacking or remote situation. Obviously, a level three or large home first aid kit could have more capabilities. It would give you some extra tools at your disposal. And let me just close with some thoughts on training. If you are the medical sheepdog in your group, you are likely already having the interest in both gear and training to take care of your role. So let me just suggest that sources for training include American Red Cross, first responder course, a basic EMT course, and there's a number of wilderness medical training courses available online that you can register for that will help give you some additional training. Okay, well there you have it, a medical emergency field management kit augments your level one or level two kit, and uh, next on the list is gonna be our blister foot care kit. This whole thing fits in this red pull tie bag, weighs under a pound and a half. If you're the medical sheepdog in your group, this is a great kit to put together. It gives you a lot of capability to take care of folks.